I've said it before, I'll say it again, vans are the best family vehicles money can buy. I'm Tom Volk for the Seattle International Auto Show, and this is the 2025 Kia Carnival Hybrid. Yes, it's available as a hybrid now. Hauling a lot of humans or cargo? Truth is, nothing works better than a van. They haven't been mini for a while now, and Kia would prefer everyone call the Carnival an MPV, at least you can call it efficient, since 2025 models can be had with a hybrid powertrain for the first time. I'm at a drive event in San Diego, California. We know who the millennials are. We know what Gen Zers want. This is the type of thing that is going to make their lives easier, and uh, it's in keeping with uh, you know their taste. Could be the styling. Drawn up in Kia's California studio, it gives off SUV vibes. The grille gets a rugged treatment for 2025, there's star map lighting from EV9, the rump gets a cleaner and more planted look, but the signature flourish remains. There's seating for seven or eight. Hybrid pricing starts at $42,000 for a base LXS. We're all driving top SX Prestige trims with the Dark Edition package if you're admiring the black badges. MSRP on this one is $54.5. The dual screens would add another $2,500. You can see how much lower our prices are compared to the competition. I mean, we have competitors that are literally scratching $60,000. Carnival is not the only hybrid in class. There's also Toyota Sienna, which is strictly a hybrid in both front and all-wheel drive, plus Chrysler Pacifica, which is a plug-in hybrid. It has 32 miles of all-electric range. The V6 powertrain remains. The hybrid is a $2,000 premium and starts with a 1.6-liter turbocharged four-cylinder with a 54-kilowatt electric motor assist. All totaled up, there's 242 horsepower and 271 pound-feet of torque. The improved phone is key tech means devices can be left in pocket or purse. Hybrids get 45 fewer horses than the V6, though an extra 11 pound-feet. No CVT, Kia sticks with a six-speed gearbox for a familiar feel, and manual shifts are real, not simulated. A crisp head-up display is available. Drive modes adjust throttle and steering response. The dampers are fixed. Carnival is front-wheel drive only, no all-wheel drive available. The V6-equipped Carnival will do the 0 to 60 dash in 7 seconds flat. The hybrid is down on horsepower, but up on torque. This also weighs 250 pounds more. But really, in everyday driving, it feels about the same. Not much torque steer off the line. The instant torque of the electric motors offers a good amount of scoot off the line. It feels faster than it is. And when you're passing on two lane roads, this doesn't have as much horsepower as the V6. So you do have to plan just a little bit more. Hard off the line in city traffic, scuffing the front wheels is easy. Uh, responsible parents won't do that. They'll be watching fuel economy. Carnival Hybrid is pretty darn efficient for a big rig. The EPA rates its fuel efficiency average at 33 miles per gallon. Now, that's not as good as Toyota Sienna, which is 36, but that one is definitely more expensive. Also, there's the Pacifica Hybrid. Um, it's a plug-in hybrid, so its efficiency is really what you make it. If you plug it in every night, you've got 32 miles of all-electric range. So, you know, buy your needs. Kia engineers believe 33 MPG is a conservative figure. I saw 34 after a couple hours of highway driving for what it's worth. The seating position is raised. Carnival's real advantage is the ride quality and the driving dynamics. It has a long wheelbase. This thing is super comfortable but the suspension is not soft and floaty. Toss it into corners like this, and it's fairly crisp. You know, for a family hauler. Existing sensors and the electric drive motor's ability to react quickly help to stabilize the ride and improve handling. And Carnival is quiet without the boominess that can happen in big hollow spaces like this. Other dynamics like the brake pedal feel are nicely done. The transition from recuperation drag to the physical hydraulic brakes is smooth. 
The transmission is smooth, no abrupt shifts. The semi-autonomous highway driving assist two system is improved. It's not as good as Super Cruise or Blue Cruise, but it will make road trips easy. Carnival's cockpit is well trimmed and a nice place to spend time. The navy blue colorway that can be had in most versions bumps the ambiance a notch. Big and contoured, these feel great in hand. When it comes to larger vehicles, you can never have too many cameras. Carnival has more than the first TV station I worked at. I do like this blind spot visual system. And it's easy to keep track of who hit who first, though my drive partner Evan was well behaved. Cup holders are now big enough to tame a Stanley Thermal Cup. Plenty of large cubbies, uh, there are so many of them, you might lose track of stuff. Seats are heated and vented, the wheel is toasty, and the bow system is decent. It's not just about the materials, it's not just about the design, it's also about these other elements that you can see in the car. The big panoramic curved displays, the digital view mirror. Kia's next generation connected user interface works well with crisp graphics, solid response, and easy to understand menu flow. Use the wake phrase, hey Kia, and it's pretty much hands-free uh, if you're paying for the subscription service. Wireless phone charging is standard, so is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are now wireless. Row 2 is a great place to relax. This is the bench that takes on three passengers. Legroom is what should make it. Passengers back here can use the interface's voice commands. Microphones pinpoint the location of the user, so if a mid-row occupant asks for more heat, they get it, not those in front. Captain's chairs are available. There are Lazy Boy style VIP seats too, but they take up a lot of room and they can't be removed. For families that use the third row a lot, the one-two punch of seat travel and a low floor makes access easier than most SUVs. There are belts for three back here. I would keep it to two unless they're smaller kids. I'm five foot nine and I'm pretty comfortable back here. Head, knee and leg room are all pretty good if the mid row is set about halfway. That's something that I can't say about all three row SUVs. Um, you've got amenities back here. The cushions are actually high enough so there's a little bit of thigh support, not tons. Overall, pretty darn good back here. Only the largest SUVs have reasonable space behind row three. Look at all of this room. Plus, the low load floor makes it easier to stuff this full of family gear. Carnival starts off with 40.2 cubic feet and it can be expanded to a whopping 145, bigger than some home closets. Effectively, that's the same as a Chevy Suburban, which is nearly two feet longer and much thirstier at the pump. I've done the math and over time, owners should make their $2,000 back. Compared to the V6 Carnival, it saves about $4,000 in fuel costs over five years. And something like a Suburban will hit your wallet even harder. This is a very nice rig. For those that haul a lot of people and or stuff, it's worth a look. Head on over to your local Kia showroom for a test drive. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Volk.